hey guys, this is going to be the start of a new series um, of videos on my channel where I uh, talk about all of the games and accessories and stuff that I have picked up um, month by month. And um, I just thought this would be a good opportunity to pretty much chronicle what I get um, every month. And um, yeah, so I have all this stuff here in front of me for the month of August, and we're just going to go straight through it and I'll try my best to talk about whatever I can. Alright, so first up here we have Bomberman Hero, which I actually got pretty recently. I picked it up actually. I went on vacation uh, just last week to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and they had a great store there called Player's Choice where I picked this up um, pretty cheaply and I'm very happy about that. And actually it was a gift from my cousin Ashley uh, who got it for me, so thanks so much Ashley. All right. Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy Color. Um, funny story, I actually got this after um, selling a bunch of Pokemon cards that I had in my, my backlog, basically, that I wasn't using um, at a yard sale that my family had with my sister's boyfriend's family. So uh, I thought to myself, well, I got a whole bunch of money from getting rid of some Pokemon cards, so let's get some Pokemon cards. Got the NES Max controller with turbo functionality from the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. Um, this is also pretty cheap, um, and the guy actually gave me kind of a, uh, a little bit of a glower if I asked him if he would do it one dollar cheaper, because it was tested and working, and I was like, dude, it's one dollar. I guess you could say the same thing to me, though. But whatever. It is tested and working, and I love this thing. For Game Gear, Land of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. Many people just don't buy Game Gear games, I feel, when they go to conventions. I don't see very many people saying, oh my god, check it out, Game Gear games. It, especially nobody that I've ever gone with, but when I saw this uh, for a pretty decent price, well, I passed it up because I wanted to get something else first, and I was like, I'll come back and get this later if I still have money left. And I did! At the Retro Gaming Expo here on Long Island, I picked this up, and uh, actually, the reason I passed it up the first time is because I saw this thing, the Sega Genesis Model 3. Mwah. Another gift from somebody. Uh, my buddy Andrew went with me to the uh, Retro Gaming Expo on Long Island, and he got me Wave Race 64 because they were taking seven years to get the credit card machine working, so he just handed me a fiver and said, just, 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 just get it. So I got it. Thanks, Andrew. I love you, man. It came as a high recommendation from a friend of mine who came to visit two weeks ago from Canada, my buddy Tyler, so I picked up Wario Land 4. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of label damage right there above the Nintendo seal of quality because of the sticker that was on the label. But, uh, maybe I'll upgrade it eventually. For now, I'm just glad that I own this, because it's a solid game. Thanks for the recommendation, Tyler. I was going to pick this up anyway, I just didn't know when. Um, glad I got it sooner than later. So for years, I've owned Pac-Man World 2 on GameCube, and I used to play the original Pac-Man World on PS1 at a friend's house when I was a kid, because I didn't grow up with a PlayStation. But I finally rectified that situation and picked myself up a copy of Pac-Man World 1 for PlayStation. Sorry about the screen glare on that thing. And uh, I'll have better camera quality eventually because I want to make this a real thing, so I'm not going to be using my desktop's camera the entire time. I'll change that up. But uh, yeah, it's so nice, and I'm finally going to get a chance to play it again for the first time in God knows how many years. Especially since I really like Pac-Man World 2, even though it's considered like a bargain bin title. It's such a good game, go play that too. But play this one also, because it's awesome. Okay, more N64 goodness in, uh, in the Bomberman realm, but uh, I picked up... Dun, 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 Bomberman 64. Um, I love Bomberman, and unfortunately I don't own many Bomberman games, despite claiming that I love Bomberman. So I picked up Bomberman 64 at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo, along with uh, a few other things, actually, uh, at the same vendor. But uh, I'll get to those when I get to those, because they're like, over here and stuff, and I'm just trying to do everything one at a time. So there's an app on uh, smartphones called Let Go, where people can kind of, like Craigslist, sell stuff that they want to get rid of. And one person was selling a bundle of Game Boy games along with a Game Boy Color, and I was only interested in one, because I had everything else. So I drove out to meet them. We actually became friends because of the situation, so 
What's up, Hillary? And, um... Paperboy for Game Boy was what I was after. <laughs> this game can't escape me, can it? Alright, let's get back into the swing of N64. Achu, I have a cold. Who else can help me? But Dr. Mario. Uh, the, the 64. I have, like, every other Dr. Mario game. Even the new ones that have come out for... Um, D like DSiWare, um, RX Express, and I've got I got Miracle Cure for 3DS, and uh, I used to rent this game from Blockbuster. There is a relic. Growing up, and uh, well, I finally decided to bite the bullet and get it. So here it is. My childhood, although I grew up with Nintendo consoles mostly, um, and I liked RPGs, I didn't get into Final Fantasy until way later. Um, and I emulated most of them to learn about it before I started buying them because I heard good and bad things about Final Fantasy from friends. And I have played Final Fantasy 4, but uh, I actually don't own it for Super Nintendo. In North America, it's called Final Fantasy 2 on Super Nintendo. So I got that. At the video game trading post in Levittown, they had this for a very decent price, and when I called to ask if they had it, they offered me a discount without even knowing who I was for asking for a discount. They just said, we have it for X price and we'll do it for $5 less. And I said, I will fucking be right there. So, got that. Special thanks to Sal from Video Game Trading Post. And you guys should go check that place out if you live on Long Island or close enough. Uh, it's in Levittown, which is in Nassau County. And um, tell them the punch card guy sent you. That's me. They'll know what, what that means. All right, so Wario couldn't get out of my mind this past week. Uh, actually two weeks ago, because in addition to Wario Land 4, I got WarioWare Twisted, which is this gigantic monstrosity of a Game Boy Advance cartridge, because it has, I believe it's a potentiometer in there, or is it an accelerometer? Whatever, basically it's one of those like, oh man, I can tell what way you're holding the Game Boy Advance type games, like Kirby Tilt and Tumble, or Yoshi Topsy Turvy. Also, both of those are pretty damn good games. Pick them up if you have the chance. But this is good, too. I really like it, and uh, it was on my list of stuff to pick up, so I picked it up. Let's get back into console territory. While I was in Myrtle Beach, uh, as I said I was last week, I went to that store player's choice that I spoke of earlier, and I found this. This is a Model 2 PlayStation 1, also called a PS1, spelled out, O-N-E. This can really be called whatever you want, as long as you just don't call it a PS1. So, I usually call it a PSONE, um, or I'll call it a PlayStation Model 2. It's in great condition. It had a little bit of uh, sticker residue here, but with some goo gone, my trusty companion, and a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser pictured here, I was actually able to get rid of it in less than 30 seconds. Alright, let's talk more about relics from the past instead of just actual video games. Those never die. While I was at the video game trading post with my buddy Tyler when he visited me two weeks ago, I picked up these, a pair of guides, basically. Uh, this one, straight out of 1999 for Sonic Adventure, featuring everybody's favorite goddamn character, Big the Motherfucking Cat, in all of his glory. Praise be unto him. And of course... The Top Secret Passwords Guidebook for NES, featuring full-color artwork, i.e. not really good screenshots of these games, codes and other miscellaneous things, all about tons and tons of different NES games. And they were both really, really inexpensive, too. Really happy about that. Go to the goddamn video game trading post! Alright, so all the rest of this stuff is uh, pretty much just games, except for one thing, but I, again, I'll get to that when I get to it. So. This is a d relatively rare title, but rare doesn't always mean expensive, so this wasn't too cheap. I mean, it wasn't too expensive. God damn. It's Mario's Preschool Fun. Actually, it's Mario's Early Years colon Preschool Fun. Because what is Preschool Fun without a colon? It's one of the uh, Mario edutainment titles for the Super Nintendo. There are two other... Uh, Mario's Early Years titles, fun with uh, letters and fun with numbers, and then of course the infamous Mario is Missing and Mario's Time Machine. But, uh, if you ask me, this one's better than all of them. 
who likes Sega Master System? Not many people, unfortunately, which is why it fizzled out and died. But I like Sega Master System, so I picked up a complete copy of Alex Kidd in Miracle World. And it's all in there and everything. Look at the beautiful cartridge. So cute. Despite the fact that the Wii pretty much shoved motion control, like, everything in your face, I did not own these two titles, so my buddy Tyler was kind enough to bring them to me when he came to visit me from Canada. Thank you, Tyler, for my Canadian copies of Wii Sports Resort and Wii Play, because Canada. Let's get back to Super Nintendo with some Street Fighter 2 Turbo, not Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and not regular Street Fighter 2. Damn those fucking titles. Just Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which I got with some help from my buddy Joe at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. Thanks, Joe, and thanks to the guy who gave me a discount if my buddy Joe gave him some extra singles instead of high bills. Thank you, Joe. Okie doke, let's talk about NES games. Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2. Um, now I played a lot of the original Star Tropics, it's fantastic, but this game I have never played, and I have wanted it for a while, and when I saw it at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo, I knew I had to have it. So I got it. And now it's mine. Okay, some more NES. Metal Gear, which I actually didn't have. Um, but now I do! Yeah! Metal Gear, the infamous start of the Metal Gear series, and what led eventually to Metal Gear Solid and that whole series. Look at Snake. He's so cool. For Super Nintendo, I was able to snag a copy of Darius Twin, which was super awesome. I picked that up at The Revolution in Stony Brook here on Long Island with my buddy Andrew, who uh, had never been there before. At least, um, I'm pretty sure he had never been there before. I don't remember. In fact, I don't even remember if he remembers. I think that was the whole conversation about it that made me think to talk about that he said he had never been... Whatever. Darius Twin. Whew! Jeez. Let's talk about NES games I should have had in my collection a long time ago, but just didn't. Stinger. Which I believe is the only Twin B game that was uh, released outside of Japan. So, Stinger. But I also have Twin B for Famicom because I import Japanese games, so now I own two Twin B games. Yeah! Yeah. Really fun game, by the way. I've played this before um, at a convention. They had it hooked up, and I sat down and played a little bit of it, and uh, I did not know it was a Twin B game. I had heard the title before um, until I played it, and then ever since then, I really, really wanted it. Um, it's fantastic. It's a side-scrolling, and also vertical-scrolling shoot 'em up but it is um, very cutesy and kawaii desune, so it's called a cute -em up by gamers, and probably regular people who have heard the term. You should play this game, it's awesome. Alright, also at the Revolution with my buddy Andrew, I was able to pick up Donkey Kong Jr., which for whatever reason I didn't have um, on NES. Um, I have a multi-cade, uh, which I keep in the basement, that I play a bunch of arcade games on. And uh, I have Donkey Kong Jr. on that, but I never actually had it on NES until just recently. So I got it. Alright, talk about games that are really hard to find. I've been looking for a copy of Jumping Flash 1 for PlayStation 1 for one year now. And it, it actually, it's almost, almost a year and a month. Just not much more, but I'm just saying. When you're me, and you're really looking for a game, any amount of time more than right now is a little bit too long to wait for. Um, so my buddy Tyler and I went into Manhattan to Video Games New York, which is in the East Village, and we uh, we found Jumping Flash 2, <laughs> which I also didn't have, and it was on my list to get, so I picked this one up instead. Um, Eventually, I will get Jumping Flash 1. It's an original long box PS1 game, for those of you who don't know. Uh, PS1 games were originally in long, like vertically long boxes, and that was going to be how they originally stayed, but um, 
then Sony was like, no, fuck, we can't, nah, it's waste, we, sh we should do this instead. So they did. Jumping Flash 1 and also Jumping Flash 2 um, are games about a rabbit who is a robot, so he's a robot. It's about a robot bunny, and it's actually a first-person platformer. It's really fun, it's super cool, and it's super cutesy, and it's very quirky. I really like it. You should try it. All right, so we're down to only a couple things here. So let's go back to consoles. This is the SNES Mini, not to be confused with the Super NES Classic Edition that is coming out that everyone is calling the SNES Mini. This is the SNES Mini. It is a Model 2 Super Nintendo that was released after the N64 came out by Nintendo in an effort to get people to uh, keep buying up those Super Nintendo games by offering the console cheaper to anybody who still didn't have it. And it was a cheaper alternative than the uh, new to market N64 that was revolutionary and 3D and very expensive at the time. It uh, didn't last very long, but it lasted long enough that people remember it. And uh, I got one at the uh, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. It was awesome. I'll tell the story about how I picked this up in another video when I cover like insane deals, but for now this is just a pickup video of what I got, and I'll tell small stories, but that one's a pretty long one. Really happy I got this. Okay, so here we have a complete in-box copy of Echo Jr. for Genesis. I believe this is a Majesco re-release um, of Echo Jr. because it's in a cardboard box. And aside from the cartridge, which there would be no physical difference, the uh, manual inside is all black and white, which is um, one of the glaring ways that you can know whether or not it's a Majesco re-release. Now, having a Majesco re-release doesn't mean you don't own a legitimate copy of the game. You absolutely do. It just so happens that the copy of the game that you own was re-released for Sega by a Mexican company called Majesco. And yeah, it's really nice. Hey, other than that, complete in box, I have Galaxian, which I picked up at the Long Island Retro Video Gaming Expo, like a lot of the stuff in this video. Um, when I went to go get it, I, uh, so my buddy Joe uh, doesn't really know too much about game collecting. Somebody really wants my attention. Buddy Joe doesn't really know too terribly much about video game collecting, so I pointed at this and I said, that game's complete in box, it looks really good, how much do you think it is? And he just went, I don't know, like hundreds of dollars? I walked up and I was like, how much is that? And the guy was like, five bucks? Would you do four? Okay. Four dollars. Just... These games are out there, they're not always expensive, especially not 70s games. Very few games from the 70s are really expensive. You just have to find them. They're very easy to pay for. <laughs> All right, and last, at the Retro Video Game Expo here on Long Island, I picked up a couple of promotional VHS tapes from Nintendo Power about various N64 stuff. So here's one about Banjo-Kazooie, which you can pick up at your local Toys R Us, and one on Diddy Kong Racing, a wild racing adventure. Because if you haven't beaten WizPig, what are you doing with your life? And hot news with a Z, so you know it's fucking real. Again, somebody really wants my attention. Hot news with a Z. It's hot, it's news, it's with a Z. The Z stands for Sideways N. For N64. Oh yeah. It's not actually what it means, I just fucking... It's a videotape about the new games coming out. Woo! N64, news with a Z. And finally, where's the front of this? This doesn't have a very good front, does it? Check out the new Rumble Pack. See how it feels to feel what you see. Technology's incredible. So that's all the stuff I picked up in August. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to make more with better quality, and uh, less people trying to get my attention. Although it could be a lady friend. It's probably not. It's probably my dealer. My game dealer. Winners don't do drugs. Only super winners do drugs. And I am not a super winner.
All right, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll be back with some more games next month.